What's up everybody and welcome to my second ever Lightroom Basics Masterclass. Coming off the success of our first one about to hit a million views, I've decided to turn this into an actual series dedicated to giving you the tools and tips needed to actually master your Lightroom photo editing. Today we are going to be taking on this edit. And by we, I'm going to give you the photo that I am editing so that you can edit right along with me. So you will firsthanded see why I use Lightroom panels the way I do and how I use the program to actually capture my professional level edits. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. This is atmosphere in a can. No more, <coughs> instead of needing a $3,000 fog machine, you can just get an atmosphere in a can. And it actually makes everything look a lot more cinematic. I use it in most of my videos. I just don't tell anyone. So you wanna learn how to master Lightroom in the shortest amount of time possible. Perfect, that is exactly what we're gonna handle in today's video. Now, if you've never used Lightroom ever in your life and you have no idea what's happening, maybe start with our Lightroom Basics Masterclass 1 video, which will be right here. But if you've already seen that video or you've opened Lightroom before and messed around, then you are in the right place. As we go through our edit today, I will still explain what I'm doing and why, as well as give you little refreshers on tools in case you forgot. Okay, so just like every time we edit a photo, I'm going to need you to remember three things. First, we correct the photo, then we color the photo, and then we finish the photo. Correction first, color second, and then you finish the photo. C, C, F. Try to remember that. Okay, I changed the lighting in hopes that that would help you remember it, but let's just go ahead, open Lightroom, and get editing. So, the first thing we are going to do is attempt to correct this image. And by correct the image, I mean we're going to fix anything that might be wrong with it. We want it to look like it did with our eyes that day. We're not coloring this for Instagram. We're not adding style. We are merely correcting the image. The basics tab was literally built for correction. So try not to edit your photo in here, even though it might seem easier. We'll get to that later. Just use this tab to try to correct things. The first thing that we're gonna do is attempt to white balance this image. You can grab this little picker right here and try to click on a part of her shirt or of a background, which, oh, that actually worked. So I clicked on the background, that worked fine. Um, or you can come in here by hand like I usually do and just try to balance the image so that there's no weird colors and it's just properly white balanced. The next thing I'll do is bring up the exposure a little to give the image a little bit of light and life. Then the next slider is contrast. We do not want to mess with contrast here. While it might look good, we're going to do that later on. Remember, we are only correcting the image. Then I'll move on. I'll bring up the highlights. I'll actually bring up the shadows, bring up the whites, and bring up the blacks a little. This is an attempt to try to maximize the dynamic range of our image. We're gonna skip over texture, clarity, and dehaze. We actually don't need any of that for this photo since it's a beauty photo. And honestly, same goes for vibrance and saturation. This photo's already got some good color. I don't wanna go changing that here. And guys, just like that, we have moved out of the correction phase. It's not meant to be difficult. That is all we had to do. Now we can move on to the second stage, which is coloring. This is the big one, but it still doesn't have to be scary. Just follow along step by step. And if at any time you get lost, just rewind a little bit and figure out exactly what we did. Now, we're moving into the next little module, which is tone curve. This is a very scary and daunting tab for most people who don't know Lightroom. It won't be anymore. I'll explain it to you very, very simply. What we have here is the brights on the right side, the whites of the image, and the shadows are on the left side. And usually you make a little S to make the brights brighter and make the darks darker. This is adding contrast. It's why we didn't use the slider up above. But now that you know what it is, I want to explain actually how I use it because it's a little different than most photographers. 
You can see that next to our basic tone curve, we have a red, a green, and a blue tab. This is Roy G. Biv, all of our primary colors. I want to explain to you how I use it so that you can just start to use it this way as well. You don't necessarily need to know why, but this is what I do and it works incredibly. The first thing you're going to do is move into the red tab and create a little S. You're going to lift up the right side and bring down the left side, creating a very subtle S. You're then going to repeat this process for the green. and then also for the blue. Now, what you start to see is they actually started to balance each other out. I was first taught this technique in filmmaking and now I apply it to all my photography. I just get this nice little S curve going on each and then I look at my image and we start to assess. As you can see right now, there's a little bit of red tinting in the highlights. So I'll go to the red S curve and I'll bring the highlights down. As you can see, it starts to get green, so I don't go too far down. You can do this for all of them. You can go in and start messing with the red shadows and balancing it out, or the greens and balancing it out. And what you can see is by creating this little S curve that's properly balanced, our before and after is already really looking nice. We've started to add color contrast to our image, rather than just contrast. Then once I'm done with affecting red, green, and blue, I will go back to the original tone curve and do a very similar little S. This is where you're going to apply your contrast to the image, not the slider up above. Side note, if you ever like that matte film look, the way you achieve that is by grabbing the bottom of your S curve here and bringing it up off the ground. However, take it back down because this is not the style we're going for with this image. And honestly, just like that, we are done in tone curve as well. I told you, tone curve doesn't have to be scary. You just make little S's and then mess around with them until your image starts to look balanced. Now, the next step of coloring, because we are still coloring this image, is to move right below to HSL or color. Now, this stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. Now, what I want you to do is take a look at the yellow in her robe, and I'll show you what each of them do in case you forgot. The first slider, Hue, this actually changes the hue of individual colors. You see, we can make the yellow orange, or we can make it highlighter yellow. The second tab is Saturation. This is where we can make it super saturated or take all the color out of it. And finally, Luminance is the actual brightness of that individual color. We can make yellow super dark or super bright. Now, in this tab, you're not going to be editing your whole photo. This is the tab we go to to selectively edit certain colors. Now, here's a way that I use this tab that a lot of photographers might not. We have a white wall in the background and my objective is to get the wall as white as possible and make her skin tones as warm and rich as possible. Now, there's a few problems. The first one being, if you look down here in the bottom left, do you see these towels right here? Do you see how they're not really crisp white? They actually have like a little bit of blue. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually move to the saturation tab and I'm gonna just start removing all of the blue out of the image. I'll even remove the green out of the image. And that started to take all the color out of the towels, but they're still not as bright as I'd like. So I'm gonna move over to the Luminance tab and I'm actually going to brighten up those blues and that green. And what you can see is if we turn it on and off, look at those towels. This is before, this is after. It's very subtle, but we were able to make the towels bright, crisp white just by removing the colors from the image that aren't supposed to be there. I've shown this technique to other photographers and they were kind of shocked because they never thought to use it in this way. But I take a lot of photos inside in a house with crappy lighting. And one thing that always happens is the white never seems really crisp and clean. This is how you can fix that. Okay, now there is actually a new tab in Lightroom that is brand new to us called color grading. This takes the place of split toning, but this is for another day. 
but today you're free. We don't need them. We can actually move on to the most slept on tool in Lightroom, the place where my entire edits are born and the, the full reason that I use Lightroom Classic. That is at the bottom of the stack. It is called Camera Calibration and it is actually not available in Lightroom CC. Now, camera calibration can be very scary if you don't know what you're doing. So again, I'll show you how I use it so that you can use it this way too and just figure out what works for you in the future. The first thing that I do is take my red primary here and move it to the right. And as you can see, it really starts messing with the image. It makes it kind of green and ugly looking, but don't worry because the next thing you do is come down to blue primary and take it in the opposite direction. And as you can see, it fixes that. And not only does it fix it, it makes skin tones perfect. So red primary goes to the right, blue primary goes to the left, and then we'll use this middle green primary to try to balance out the exact look we are going for. So I will just move this slider around until it starts to give me the look that I desire. And in all honesty, I didn't even have to do much. This is looking really, really nice. I'm just trying to get nice golden skin tones. I can bring down the orange saturation or up. You're just playing with this back and forth until you start to get the exact skin tone you're looking for. It's a hidden tool. And as you can see, I'm even starting to get a little excited because this is like coming light years ahead of where we were. And I'm really, really, really enjoying this image now. Uh, the last thing you can do is go up right here to the shadows and move that back and forth. Um, as you can see, I'm actually gonna take it, if we take it to the left, it's a little too orangey. If I take it to the right, it's a little too blue. There we go. This is starting to look really, really nice. Camera calibration is the biggest secret weapon you will ever find in Lightroom. Do not be intimidated by it. Take the red to the right, the blue to the left, and then use the green to balance. And this is your secret weapon to mastering skin tone. And just like that, I believe we are done with the coloring phase. We'll change it here in a minute a little, but this looks incredible for the moment. The wall has a nice crisp white feeling. The skin tones are really rich and warm. We're done. We can move out of coloring and change the lighting back. And we are on to our final step, finishing. Now, finishing an image does not simply mean exporting it and saving it to your computer. What we're doing here is finally refining the image, taking out any imperfections in the skin and adding masks or other little tools to fix things that were not fixed yet. I'm actually, I see a little bit of an orange haze up here in the highlights. So I'm actually just gonna jump back into tone curve and I'm just gonna remove a little bit of the red out of the atmosphere, out of the highlights. That makes me feel better. That looks a little better. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> the first thing that I notice is up here in the corner, you got these horrible vignettings up here and up here. You can see it's just, sometimes what happens with certain lenses, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna go down to lens correction and instead of choosing a profile, we're gonna move to manual. Now, the only thing we're gonna do here is actually go down to vignetting and drag it to the right. Boom, we're done there. The next thing we wanna do with the image, like I said before, is I want my subject to be warmer than the background. I really wanted the background nice and white and now I want my subject to kind of have a little bit of a warm pop. Lightroom actually has a new tool for us. If we click new mask, we can click select subject and it automatically detects my subject, highlights the whole thing for me, which is awesome. And what we'll do is we'll just change the white balance a little until it's right where we want. Like that's a little bit of a golden tone. We can lighten her up a little in the highlights or bring down the shadows if we want like that. And that looks great to me. This is supposed to be a beauty shot and she looks radiant. Uh, there's only one thing left to do. That is something that I picked up a long time ago and I would encourage you to do as well. That is to put a little bit of light in the eyes. The eyes are the gateway to the soul and photographs have to have soul. Now to do this, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in on her eyeballs. 
and we're gonna create a new mask. This time we're gonna choose the brush and we're gonna use two fingers up or down to make the brush bigger and smaller. And what we're gonna do is just draw right here in the eyeball and then right here in the eyeball. And then what we'll do is take the exposure and bring it up. Now, I've said this before, you've gotta be careful because if you go too far like this and you think it looks great, when you zoom out, it's a Twilight 4 poster. Do not do this. Subtlety is key. So what we'll do is just bring up a little bit of light like that. And what that does is just adds a little bit of definition to the eyeball so that when someone looks at your photo, their eye goes to the subject's eye and they connect with another human for a second. Now, the last thing that we can do to finalize this image is to get it ready for Instagram, which means we need to crop it. So we'll click on the crop tool right here on the left and um, we're gonna choose a four by five crop, which is what Instagram's crop factor is. And then by pressing the O key, you see you can actually switch through all these different overlays, which will help you with your composure. I actually love this one because it's a little different. I'm gonna put her eye in that one third line, just like that. So her eyes on one third, her shoulders in another, She's nice and centered. There we go. That is the after, that is the before. This was not an easy photo to edit and you should be proud of yourself. Even if you only got close to this, this is an extremely hard edit to pull off. This is a inside shot with bad white balancing and even worse lighting. And you were able to take it from this green piece of crap to this image. Bright, full of life, warm skin with a properly balanced environment. This is photo editing and you've just learned one of the hardest things to pull off, which is how to make a crappy photo better. Now we can start in next episodes and things to make good photos great. But until you can make bad photos good, you can't progress. You should pat yourself on your back, feel proud of yourself. Make sure to save this video to like a playlist or send it to a friend or even send it to your own phone. But whatever you do, refer to it all the time. There is no 100% foolproof way to edit photos. And if anyone tells you there is, they're lying. That is why this series will be editing one photo at a time, giving you the photo to edit right along with us. And in time, you will learn to edit almost every photo that I know how to edit. And before you know it, you will just have all of my knowledge and you will be able to edit without any tutorials on the internet. But other than that, I love you guys very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And just remember, if you do not have your camera with you, you will not take photos. So have your camera with you at all times, whether it's in your backpack, in your hand, in your car, Wherever you are, make sure your camera is with you so that you can actually have some photos to edit. So get out there. Do not be afraid to fail. Keep shooting. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.